has played and Team Marquette that deserves the Sweet 16 as much as we deserve the Sweet 16. Both teams left it out there on the court. We knew when we played Marquette on Sunday that was a different Marquette that played on Friday. They let Rice dictate the tempo and they did a tremendous job. We were able to slice them up a little with our man-to-man -man offense. When they went to triangle and two, Coach Kelly Bond White did a heck of a job running some stuff that we worked on all week to get ready for the junk. We see it a little bit in the SEC, but they're trying going too. We got the shots, but it was really squeezing our post players down low. And I think uh, even though they both got double doubles, I don't think we took quite enough advantage of hurting them inside. But give them credit. Their defense was outstanding. They're known as an offensive team, but tonight they played as good a defense as we did. Kennedy Carter here, as Coach Starkey said, played her best defensive game of the year. Period, period, period. All the other stuff we expect. The points, the 40 minutes, the leadership. But defensively, she was outstanding. Uh, the crowd that was there, we really appreciate them. Uh, we're going to keep growing by numbers, and we're going to get back out there, and I'm going to do a better job of getting out there among the people and try to find out how we can get these crowds to enjoy this basketball team. When you have a team that has overcome as much as we have this year, the people of College Station, and particularly the 68,000 students, need to wake up and realize what they have here in their own backyard. They can watch on TV against in Chicago. We're looking forward to it. We're going to take tomorrow off, be regular students. We'll get to Chicago on Thursday. And I hope your newspaper or your TV station will do the same. You've saved enough money this year, okay? Make sure they send a crowd up there because if it is Notre Dame, they might have eight to 9,000. So hopefully y'all will be able to cover it. There's nothing else going on in basketball except this Aggie women's basketball team. And I want you to follow us and I appreciate all the coverage you've given us this year. Questions for student athletes. The left sees <coughs> just Chambria, take us by the three-pointer. Was that the play out of the huddle? And just talk, talk about that play and what you saw. And Kennedy, Kennedy, Kennedy get you the ball. Well, it wasn't the play out the huddle. Uh, Kennedy just made a great read. Uh, they were triple teaming her all night coming off those ball screens. And she hit me. I was open. And so I knocked it down for them. The left, Justin. For Kennedy and Chambria, the girls were down by, I think, nine midway through the third quarter. Like Coach said, you've overcome so much this year, so I knew there was no quit in you, but how much did it take today to battle back from that? It seems like you, you girls were down almost the whole time, and then finally, in, late in the fourth, you're able to take the lead. Um, I think it just takes heart. I mean, we knew that we could go out there and compete with them. They got a lot of good shots. A lot, they knocked down a lot of good threes, but I think we just stayed composed and played with poise, and we, we ran away with the game at the end. Jim. Well, it was a game of runs. We knew that, though. Um, they're a great ball club. You know, we were ready to fight. You know, we, we wanted to protect our home court. And we played like it could have been our last game of the season. So we had to give it all we had for 40 minutes. To the right, Christy. Christy Regan from the AP. Kennedy, you talked yesterday about maybe how your defense is under, the team's defense is underrated. What does it mean to you to sit here and have your coach talk about your defense when usually people talk about your offense? Um, it means a lot. I've been working on my defense a lot, but I'm not the only uh, good defensive player on my team. We all five can play defense, and I think that's the underrated part as well. We defended them pretty good tonight, man, and then we went zone, and we got a good, we got a couple good stops. So, go to the very back, Mike. Kenny, on the uh, 
On Shams, go ahead three at the end. Talk us through what you saw in that play. I know you drove. Did they collapse, and that's when you saw Sham, or, or what did you see on that play? Yeah, I think they were in a triangle, and uh, Coach had called out horns, and I knew that somebody was going to come with me off the ball screen, and I knew that they were shagging on Sham all night. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, this girl's been in the gym all week. She's been working on her shot, getting shots up. I trust her. I believe in her. So I hit her, and she, was not, she, was, she knocked the shot down. Another in the very back, Mike. So you have the utmost confidence in your teammates. I mean, I know you had 30 tonight, but you, they have the green light in big situations like that. If you see them open, you're going to make the play? I mean, of course. I believe in all my teammates. If they're open and we need a shot and um, everybody's collapsed on me, I believe in them. I trust in them. That's the biggest thing about being a leader and just leading your team. I can't always make the big shot sometimes. Sometimes my teammates have to step up, and Sham did that tonight. To the left here, Justin. India. I think I got that right. Mm -hmm. 17 uh, offensive rebounds for you and Sierra down low. Just That's that's hustle, isn't it? I mean, can you just talk about what it took down there and how big that was today? Well, Marquette's a really big transition team. So I think C's and I's main focus was trying to stop that. And one of the ways we can stop that is by rebounding. So we knew that we had to crash the boards hard every time. And if our guards weren't going to make our shots, then we need to make sure that we were going to clean it up and stop Marquette. I mean, Marquette did get some good looks off of transition, but a lot of times we stopped them because C and I just kept going. And even if we missed, we made sure that we just kept trying to get the ball and score it. So. All right, Christy. Chambria, um, Coach Blair was raving about you in a, a couple of days ago and what your contributions are to the team, but you're kind of or in, you know, in the shadow of, of Kennedy because she does so much. So. What does it mean to you to have such a big play in such a big moment to send the team to the Sweet 16? Uh, it doesn't really bother me that I'm in the shadows. I kind of like being, you know, kind of off in the cut. She's so. not in the shadow. Sham is really the backbone of our team. She's the engine. She really gets us going. Without her defensive stops and her leadership as a point guard, we probably wouldn't even be this far right now. See, yeah, I have great teammates like that. You know, I just want to do whatever I can for this ball club, run the ball club, make sure we're successful. And you know, keep keep going for my teammates. Time for a couple more for student athletes in the back, Mike, and then to the left, Cease. This is for all you guys, but going back to the Sweet 16 for the second year in a row, how excited are you guys to make it back to Chicago and potentially have a chance to redeem last year's loss to Notre Dame? Indy. Uh, I would say it feels different than last year because a lot of us didn't really play last year. And so we all were put in new positions and new roles. So I just think that this year, yes, we made it last year, but I just think it means more to us this year because we finally, I feel like everybody on the team has a role and everybody's competing and everybody's giving it their all and we all want it. Um, God is good. Uh, a year ago, I was at home at my junior college watching kind of like the same, same game. And so it'll be my first Sweet 16. Um, I wouldn't want to do. I wouldn't want to do it with any other team. I'm proud of my teammates, and I have worked so hard and the coaching staff to make it this far. Uh, like she said, um, I want to thank God. I'm thankful for the opportunity to even be able to play after coming back and you know breaking my finger for me to go out there and just compete at the highest level. Man, that's a blessing, and I'm really excited to go to Chicago and bring my coach back home. I think we got a good chance this year, a different team, and I'm really excited to get out there and play with my sisters. Shambria, uh, all the starters played at least 39 minutes. You never left the court a couple times whenever those runs looked maybe you guys were getting a little bit tired. Did, did, at times, did their tempo get you know cause you concern? Uh, no. I had to play it like it was my last game of the season. Uh, either way it goes, it was my last game of the season at Reed Arena. And Coach Blair told me before the game, I can rest tomorrow. So that was my mentality. <laughs> 40 minutes, so I figured I can rest tomorrow and take care of my body tomorrow. I have a question here, I believe. As a former journalist, Sham, this is your question. What was it like guarding Heidemann? Compare her to SEC guards and tell me the strength of that kid number five for Marquette. Uh, she's a great player. Um, she doesn't quit. She, she runs 40 minutes. Um, she has a phenomenal handle. She can shoot the ball. She can get to the rack. She's, it's just as fast as any SEC guard. Uh, so it was a challenge, but uh, I'm used to guarding guards in the SEC. And, you know, when at the beginning of the year when I first got here, I had to guard Kennedy every day in practice. So it was kind of a, it was kind of a little easier than guarding Kennedy. 
One more here to the left, Cease. Kenneth, didn't you guard her sometimes too? Weren't you guarding five at times too, though? Yeah, I did guard her. Uh, my main thing was just force her right. I mean, I just tried to make sure that the ball wasn't in her hands. But like Sham said, she's a great player. Um, she stayed composed and she kept her head, knocked down a lot of big shots. So, yeah. Ladies, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Like, good luck next week. Clear now. Questions for Coach to the right, Christy, and then Zach. Christy Rico from the AP. Um, Gary, you talked yes, or maybe two days ago about Shambria and what she means to your team. How satisfying was it for you to be able to see her kind of get the shine that she hasn't gotten because she is playing on a team with Carter? I think what Shambria gives us sometimes players who've been on vans going from place to place and no charters or airplanes. There's a toughness about them. And sometimes they come to you with a little bit of chip on their shoulder. And this is a kid that started off at Division One, then transferred in December of her first year to come back home to Ocala, Florida. And the kid is just tough. I mean, uh, who was, I'm trying to think of the guy on the men's team uh, a couple years ago, one of the point guards that came in that I thought that made the difference on the men's team, having him as a grad transfer. And this is what this has done for us. And now it just gives me more guards for next year because obviously Wilson will be back and I've got a freshman point guard coming in. So I'm gonna have more options. You look at the minutes played down there, uh, our kids were not going to lose here. We were not going to let these fans down or this team down. And it all starts with Shambria. The talent is right here. That is, if, if there's 10 better players in the country than Kennedy Carter, and I know it's going to be close to see who makes State Farm All-American. They're going to say, oh, she's just a little sophomore. Look at all these juniors and seniors that deserve it. Yes, they do. But why not give it to a sophomore who's as electrifying as she is? And she has taken Sham under her wing and really helped out. Those two really work well together. Third row on the right, Zach. Gary, obviously not at Marquette was a good shooting team, but did you expect them to be able to shoot with the proficiency they did today? Our goal was to hold them like Rice did to 33%, but we wanted to have a little bit more transition than what we had. Tell you the truth, we were too tired to run. And I kept saying, go, 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 and Kennedy would look over at me like, hey, let's just go down and set up and run our stuff. Look what both teams shot. Look what both teams shot from the three, okay? That's good offense. That's good women's basketball. And I, I get so tired of the naysayers that say the women cannot do what the men can do. They dunk and they do this in 360s. You go ask those fans up there. That's about as entertaining of a game as I've been a part of. Very similar to the DePaul, uh, the DePaul game last year. But, folks, we played better tonight than we did against DePaul to win last year with supposedly better talent. This team played a very good ball game tonight and on Friday. Other questions? All right, Christy. Uh, you, you spoke yesterday about um, having the chip on your shoulder, maybe being underestimated this season. So what does it mean to you personally to get to the Sweet 16 again? Like I said, I'm a, I'm a guy that cries at movies sometimes, okay? And I'll go to a movie on Monday night. I promise you there's going to be no basketball. I'll find something to go see. Uh, it meant a lot. I'm tired of people second-guessing this team. I'm tired of people trying to figure out when I'm going to retire, okay? If what I do and my staff does it as well as they do, why not let us keep coaching? And why not people get onto the bandwagon 
of what Texas A&M is going to be. The day that I do retire, this program's not going anywhere. It's going to stay at the top. It's consistency. It's the same thing with Coach G in soccer, Steve Boltman, or Joe Evans. There's a lot of good things happening in the women's side at Texas A&M. I'm proud to be a part of it. I've got a great administration. I've got the best coaching staff in the country that is the most underrated. I've got the most veteran staff in the SEC with more years of experience than any other team in the SEC. And we keep finding ways. Coach Starkey does a remarkable job. That last stop, give credit to him. The last basket that we scored, give credit to uh, Kelly Bond White. The last inbounds play that we got it to Kennedy to, for her to give out, give credit to Amy Wright. I'm the orchestra leader. They pay me the so-called big bucks, but I think this staff has earned every dime of it. And if y'all go to the movie with me tomorrow night, I'm buying. There you go. We'll go to the back behind the lights, Mike. Hey, Coach. Uh Marquette's coach talked about that last play where you guys got the stop, Kennedy got the steal. Is that how you drew up the defense, or was that just a good play, no, a headsy no, play no. by Kennedy? That's Kennedy having a nose for the ball. Uh, no, we didn't draw it up that way, but she is such a great help defensive player. There's no telling how good Kennedy is going to be the last two years with her defense, but sometimes we cannot waste her on defense because I've got to have her on the court. And we can't take chances sometimes. But she has got to remember last year how she always stayed in foul trouble. It's not so much this last part of the year. She's playing a lot smarter basketball. But, no, Kennedy just made a great play and wanted the ball. To the left, Justin. Coach, building on that, you're down nine midway through the third quarter. I know it's no time to hit the panic button, but the girls certainly didn't and continued to fight and scratch and claw back. You just speak to – the team and how they're able to do that? Marquette was down nine under three minutes to go Friday. This is what great teams do. We have the ability to play great at certain times. We do not let anything get us down, just like the Marquette team did the other day. And this is just the toughness that we have. I mean, I, I'm surprised Shambria hadn't asked me to go join the Corps, okay? I wouldn't want to serve under her because she'd be barking orders like me. But this is what this team's all about. Have we ever had a guard at Texas A&M that can do what Kennedy Carter has? She is the most unknown player in Bryan College Station I've ever seen in my life, but she is known more nationally than she is within this own town right here. Other questions? All right. Coach, congratulations. Look at the assist turnover rate for both teams. That shows you where a good game is. 17 to 8, 22 to 10. You just saw a great basketball game. But thanks for the coverage. Y'all have a good time. That's it. That's it. Guys.